Alright, so today I'm going to show you how to color in a Hero Forge character using Photoshop. The first step, of course, is to build your hero. And after that's done, you're going to make sure that there is no base and that your character is in a suitable pose. We're going to go to Screenshot, we're going to pick Cutout. We're going to hit Download. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a duplicate layer of the original. Just to make sure we don't destroy anything. Next, we're going to create a group. We're going to place the copy inside the group. We're also going to control right click on the copy right here to select all of it. We're going to hit the group and we're going to hit layer mask. Now we're going to get a layer mask. You can see that the character is in white and the background is in black. Now, in theory, if we draw something in black over the layer mask, we're going to see through it. Alright, so next we're going to click the original copy. Let's just name this character. We're going to click character and we're going to make sure that it's set to multiply and we're going to add another layer beneath it. That way if we draw anything on the layer beneath, for example in orange, we're going to fill it in only in the character. We can't draw outside it now. But before I do anything else I'm going to make sure that we have a background. And to do that, I'm just going to place a layer outside here, and we're going to select a white color. We're going to hit Alt-Delete. That's going to fill in this entire layer. And we're going to call it Background. Alright, so I suggest we start with the shoes, and I'm just going to name this layer Shoes. And we're going to start coloring it in. So we're going to choose a good color, uh, something shoe-like. I suggest something brown, perhaps. And we're gonna try. Uh, that's not the color I'm looking for. That's more like it. Maybe a little darker. Eventually, when you found your color, you're just gonna fill it in. I'm gonna start by filling the entire thing in, and then I'm gonna do the details later. And if you regret filling in the color, you just switch to the eraser, or hit E, and then you simply erase it, and it only erases the color. Alright, next I suggest that maybe the bottom of the shoe is a lighter color. I'm going to pick a lighter color, and that's still the eraser, so I'm going to pick a lighter color, and we're going to just paint in the sole here. That looks alright. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And the beauty of the multiply layer is that it's going to keep the shading. So even if I draw all over this, you're still going to have the shadows right here. So let's make the shoelaces pop, right? Maybe that's a good color, yeah. And if you do accidentally draw over color you didn't mean, you can simply hide the character, select the color again, and then just fill in the part that you did not mean to fill in. Now obviously if you did a race, you just remove all the color, so be sure to pick the correct color. That looks pretty good. The other shoe is covered, so we don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna leave this part of the shoe uncolored for now, because that's a hole. And Basically, later we're going to fill in the skin color here. Alright, we have shoes. Now we're adding a new layer. We're going to name it Pants. We're going to start working on the pants. Now the beauty here is that if we place the pants underneath the shoes, we select the color for the pants. I was thinking something like a dark green. Now, if I'm coloring in the pants and I accidentally go over the shoe, the shoe is over the pants. And then you know, we're not going to have a problem. I was thinking something more grey. A lot of the drawing here and the artistry aspect of it is just finding a good colour. That should about do it. Now obviously if the pants layer was above the shoes, you'd get this mess. So make sure you have the right order. We're going to check how it looks in the character view, and that's fine. We're going to colour in the belt. Maybe something brown again for the leather. Now generally you don't want to leave anything in the original color if you can avoid it. 
So even though this buckle is not technically gray, I still want to go ahead and cover that. If you have doubts about what color should be what, you might be want to switch over to the non-character view. That might give you some insight. For me, this looks fine. All right, next part we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the shirt because why not? I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna place it, um, I would say under the pants and make sure that it is inside the group layer here. Now we're gonna image shirt. I'm gonna make it kind of a tan color. All right, something like this maybe. It'll give you something like this. And I think that we should make it a bit more light in this part. Kind of realized that I like the other color better than the outside, so I'm gonna just paint it over. And you might think that doesn't do a lot, adding this stripe of color in the middle, but it really does a lot really helps with the overall feel of the character. All right, I'm satisfied with that. And if we look without that one, you can still see that there is a bit of coloration. All right, I'm gonna head over to the brush again. I'm gonna take a bit of a darker color. And I wanna highlight the under shirt. It'll give him some extra depth as well. Just gonna blend those colors in a bit. That looks perfectly fine. All right, I'm also gonna pick another color and do the buttons a bit more. All right, next we're gonna start working on the coat. All right, name it coat, and we're gonna take a nice color for coat. Um, it's a bit similar to the shoe, so I'm gonna go for something more uh, splotched. Yes! Don't wanna hit this knife right here. And I suppose the inside should also have the same color. I remember now that we're doing it above the pants, we might actually accidentally color the pants and we don't want brand pants or it's gonna look like our character had a very bad day. And then I suppose this part should be a bit brighter. And the reason I'm avoiding this piece is because it's a part of a mantle and it's not the same. And then right here I realized that I forgot a piece of the browner coat. So I'm just gonna pick the brown. Do note that there is a reason why I keep selecting the colors from this view. It's because the color meter, the sampler will detect the shading. And so if I try to pick this color, I won't get the same color as the one I was drawing with. That looks totally okay. All right, so next we're gonna do the mantle, I suppose. I'm just gonna make a mantle there. Cape. And place it under the coat. That way I can just color the thing real quick. That looks completely okay. All right, next we're gonna do the hair. Should be relatively easy. Should be some kind of dark gray. Sometimes it's difficult to see where certain things begin and other things end, but 
If you ever do face that problem, just look at the reference model on Hero Forge. Or wing it. Alright. Next we're gonna add some red hints inside this. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we take a really tiny brush and we're gonna follow the hair. Just add these small red details. Alright, I'm gonna include the horns in a layer that is beneath the hair. And so I want my horns to be uh, like a tinge brighter than my hair. That looks pretty good. So what you're going to want to do here as well is to... You're going to want to add some highlights here as well. Follow the horns. For the eyes, we're going to create a group. We're going to place a layer inside that and another layer inside it. We're going to call the upper layer black and the lower layer white. The white layer is going to set to soft light and we're just going to color in the eyes. You could pick whichever blending mode you want, but personally I prefer soft light. Alright, that looks terrifying, so we're gonna go ahead and pick black now. I always find the eyes to be difficult because it's so easy for them not to look good. You just have to keep trying, do it over and over until it looks good. I would say that looks acceptable. Now that we're done with the eyes, we're gonna move on and do the skin. And I think the skin should be beneath all of these. I'm gonna go ahead and color in all the skin that I can see. I just now realized that this piece of cape is missing. Alright, now I suppose the last part is to fix the flames. For the flames, I'm gonna put the layer above the coat and I'm gonna pick a red. Just a bright red. Now what we gotta do is we gotta make... We're gonna call this one red. We're gonna add another layer and we're gonna call this one yellow. We're gonna add another one in between these two and we're gonna call it orange. I'm also gonna select these and make them into a group. I'm gonna call the group fire. Perfect. I'm gonna pick the yellow one. I'm gonna pick a bright yellow color. I'm gonna start putting it through these crevices. Finally, we're gonna go to orange. Pick a bright orange, and we're gonna be able to brush between these now. It's gonna go underneath the yellow and over the red. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and touch up the red here because it accidentally went too far. And then what I want to do is I want to go to blending options, add an outer glow, turn it into a bright orange. And that's gonna bring some immediate light to the surrounding, give it some warmth. And finally on the top layer we're gonna select one and we're gonna call it glow and we're gonna pick the brush. We're gonna set it to a very very large one. We're gonna pick the hardness to be something like 2%. And we're going to pick a bright orange. We're also going to decrease the opacity. 35. Make this a hard light. And we're going to make the inner glow a 
screen. And I'm gonna dial back the opacity on this one until I like how it looks. And then just dial in an appropriate amount of glow and an appropriate amount of light and you're done. Oh yeah, also I forgot the color in this dagger. And there we have it. A fully colored Hero Forge character. Without the glow and the character model, we got a nice 2D style drawing.